<laughs> Court, call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitute the quorum. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by <coughs> Craig Maxwell. Uh, after the invocation, please remain standing for the pledges. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Thank you for this opportunity. Please excuse my raspy voice. If you'll please bow your head. Lord, our heavenly gracious Father, we come before you today looking eagerly at each new day with a smile, realizing that you have provided us with so many blessings. For we see many opportunities to make this a better world in which to live. But we will be hard-pressed to do it alone. Guide us, strengthen us, and lead us. Now it's up to us to put others' needs in our thoughts, our actions, and our prayers. We were all brought up to lend a helping hand to those who are struggling with health, finances, loss of loved ones, or just trying to put food on the table. Sometimes we lose the awareness of taking the time to help others. But we can all make a difference. It's really not a difficult decision. Please look out for those who are away from home and away from loved ones. Those who chose and have chosen to protect our freedoms. We do not say thanks often enough. You sent, our, you sent your only son for our sake so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Now it's up to us to do the same for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thanks, Craig. Well, to the joy of many and the sorrow of few, um, I also have a raspy voice, and I think Commissioner Johnson, I don't know if it's allergies or what, but um, we're going to uh, make it through that with me saying as least amount as possible, which I know, again, will be a joy to many of y'all out there. You've been yelling at your grandchildren, haven't you? No, 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 no. Not the grandkids. Um, agenda announcements, Mr. Mayhews. Thank you, Honor. Members of the Court, we have several announcements this morning. The first concerns the public hearings, items 8A and B. Both A and B will be held until a future date. So we will have only one public hearing this morning. Also, members of the court, under the administrator section, item 9A1, we have a revised court communication in your red folder for you this morning as it relates to that particular resolution. Then finally, members of the court, would like to remind you that next week, which is the 26th, we will not be having commissioners court. Our next court meeting will be the first week of uh, May. <coughs> Thank you, Honor. Thank you. Uh, Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of April the 12th. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, Commissioner Wynn, you have a resolution. Yes, sir. This uh, resolution is uh, to command a 50-year uh, uh, at the beginning uh, of the Vietnam War. Uh, this program is um, put together in partnership with the uh, Fort Worth Joint uh, Reserve Base uh, to thank and honor all the U.S. veterans and family members of the Vietnam War and our allies, <coughs> including the personnel who were held as uh, POWs and those who still uh, remain uh, missing in action. Uh, so I move for uh, its ratification. It will be presented uh, at the uh, at the uh, Joint Reserve Base uh, this Saturday. I'll second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Bye. <laughs> Commissioner Johnson, I know you have a, uh, a resolution, but we're going to ask Commissioner Fickus to uh, to be our official reader. <laughs> He's our spokesman the today. Official reader. You're the official reader today. Yeah, so I'm glad that we, well, almost all of us got the purple uh, message today, so I guess 
We forgot to call you. Sorry, Commissioner. My first resolution is a National Osteopathic Medicine Week. And if Commissioner Ficus would read that into the record, please. Thank you. This is a resolution for National Osteopathic <coughs> Medicine Week, whereas since osteopathic medicine was founded in 1874 by Andrew Taylor Steele, MD, DO, osteopathic physicians, DOs, have made tremendous contributions to the American healthcare system, treating U.S. presidents and Olympic, Olympic athletes, contributing to the fight against AIDS and the fight for civil rights and serving on national health care panels and boards. And whereas the more than 123,000 DOs currently in the United States are fully licensed to prescribe medicine, and practice in all specialty areas of medicine, including surgery, and are trained to consider the health of the whole person. And whereas the, I'm going to move up here. And whereas the UNT, UNT Health Science Center creates a healthier community for Tarrant County by training the DOs of tomorrow at the Texas College <coughs> of Osteopathic Medicine. TCOM, which is among the nation's distinguished graduate institutions. And whereas TCOM is unique among the state's medical schools through its applications-based medical school curriculum, cutting edge research, quality patient care, dedication to rural medicine, and outstanding student performances in both academic and clinical studies. And whereas the citizens of Tarrant County recognize the need for DOs who are committed to bringing attention to improving the health of America regardless of age, income level, or, or eth eth ethnicity. <coughs> now therefore be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim April 17th through April 24th, 2016 as National Osteopathic Medicine Week in Tarrant County in recognition of the contributions of the University of North Texas Health Science Center and the T and the TCOM to the overall health of our community. And further, we urge all citizens and community organizations to support this ob ob observance by helping to educate residents about DOs and osteopathic medicine. In witness whereof we have here unto set our hand and cause the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 19th day of April, 2016. We'll move for its approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I believe we have Dr. Pesca as well, who is the Dean of the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, as well as, well as some student doctors. Why don't y'all come forward? And I think Commissioner Johnson will come down and I'll just uh, say a few quick words. Um, Commissioner Johnson, Judge Whitley, and esteemed commissioners, uh, my name is Peter Delu, and I'm a third year medical student and a uh, student officer. Uh, on behalf of the Texas, of Col Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine and UNTL Science Center, I would like to say thank you for having us here this morning. Um, as members of the osteopathic community, we're here to promote National Osteopathic <laughs> Medicine Week, which focuses on increasing awareness of osteopathic medicine in local communities across the country. Uh, osteopathic physicians bring a patient-centered, holistic, hands-on approach to diagnosing and treating illness and injury. The school's goal is to provide quality osteopathic <coughs> physicians to the state of Texas as well as Tarrant County with a specific emphasis on where those physicians are most needed, primary care. Currently, 65% of TCOM grads practice in primary care specialties. Uh, this is one reason why we are so grateful uh, for our relationship with John Peter Smith Healthcare System and Mr. Early uh, and the wonderful education they have provided us as students. 
the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine graciously accepts this non-week proclamation on behalf of more than 2,800 TCOM alumni, 1,800 current students and faculty, and all the employees who work dilig diligently to ensure our success and the success of healthcare within Texas and Tarrant County. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention is this week we've been going out to all the local colleges um, basically to represent NOM week and uh, trying to encourage students not only to practice medicine but maybe think about something like osteopathic medicine. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. You know, I would add, I don't know uh, if, if Gibb is still around, but is Speaker Lewis, J.D., is Speaker, uh, is Gibb still here? Is he, Gibb's left. Uh, Speaker Lewis was here earlier and has always been a tremendous advocate for uh, Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine uh, as, as, you know, one of the primary reasons why that university has uh, flourished in this area and we really can't thank him enough for all that he's done over the years to uh, to help that that agency and we're, we'll certainly also impart that and hopefully we'll tell him that again next week or week after next if he's if he happens to be up here but he's done a tremendous job thank you all for being here today thank you and Commissioner Johnson I believe you have another resolution I do for National Volunteer Month <coughs> Commissioner Fickus would read that into the record, please. Yes, this is a resolution <coughs> of commendation to AgriLife Extension volunteers. Whereas citizens who volunteer their time pro provide assistance which cannot be measured in terms of dollars and their dedication to making this community a better place to live is the foundation for economic development, environmental stewardship, and healthy living. And whereas our Tarrant County Extension Volunteer Force is a great treasure with 1,137 volunteers who donate more than 71,519 volunteer hours last year, which is equivalent to an additional 34 full-time employees. Whereas volunteers can connect with community service opportunities of Tarrant County's AgriLife Extension, as master gardeners, 4-H adult leaders, program area volunteer members, Texas Extension Education Association members, master's wellness volunteers, and leadership advisory board members, and whereas Texas A&M AgriLife Extension relies on knowledgeable volunteers who serve on program committees to plan, implement, and evaluate educational programs in a variety of subject matter areas and whereas the Texas Water Star Commercial Horticultural Committee has provided leadership for education for the green industry in Tarrant County and whereas the 15 current members of the committee have given 104 years of combined service to AgriLife Extension in Tarrant County, and whereas the committee's chair, Dean Amicillo of Tarrant Regional Water District, has served since 2013 in his vision of the Water Efficient Recognized Green Professional Program came to fruition in 2016. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in honor of Volunteer Recognition <coughs> Month, we commend Dean Minchello and all the dedicated Extension volunteers for their service to the people of Tarrant County in witness whereof we have heretofore <coughs> set our hand and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 19th day of April 2016. I move for its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I believe we have uh, Darlene Mott, representative of AgriLife Extension. Why don't you come on down? And then also, I know you have uh, uh, Dean here with you, but do you have other volunteers who, would y'all all please stand and give us an opportunity to thank you for all that you do for the. <laughs> Jacob 
Gibson, my extension colleagues, and again, my voice, much like everyone Must be going else, around. Just, mm. Uh, mm. But we do appreciate the opportunity to express thanks for the ongoing support for the court and to certainly highlight the work of our volunteers without their assistance and support. It just has made a tremendous difference in improving the quality of lives for our residents here in Tarrant County, especially the contributions that we have just heard of from Dean Mancello. So would you like to say a few words? Sure. Absolutely. Step forward. Thank you very much for this um, award. It's, um, it's a great honor to just be part of the community. And when Laura had asked if I would want to be part of this committee, I didn't even pause. It was just, uh, you know, I had to do it right away. I knew... You know, all the great things that AgriLife does and always does for the community and for everybody. And it's just a privilege and, and it's great to uh, be part of such a great committee. And uh, Laura is really the one that does all the work behind everything. So she's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Laura, sneak in there next to me. He's not going to bite you there. Court members, you have before you the consent agenda. Move for the approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we have a public hearing. Uh, Ms. Ward, if you'll come forward. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we're requesting the commissioners Court conduct a public hearing to receive citizen input into the 2016 <coughs> action plan. The 2016 action plan covers CDBG, home, and ESG uh, on behalf of the entitlement cities through Tarrant County. We fund, with through CDBG, we fund public work projects um, in partnership with the cities, and we conduct and um, implement housing rehabilitation. Through the home program, we do we develop affordable housing. Uh, for low-income families, and we do housing rehabilitation. And in our emergency solutions grant, we pay for operations for local shelters, and we um, issue uh, vouchers for prevention of homelessness. Today, we, this is for citizen input. There's no action to be taken by the court. So at this time, I will open the public uh, hearing and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. Sounds like somebody's calling in. <laughs> There appearing to be nobody uh, to, to speak to this issue, then I'll close the public hearing. And again, there's no action that we take at this time. No, sir. We'll come back with the application ahead um, in May. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Manius. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Remember, we have two additional items to bring to you this morning. The first one, we're requesting that the Commissioner's Court approve a resolution which endorses the Arlington Chamber and uh, I'm sorry, the Arlington Convention of Visitors Bureau's application to host the 2018 Annual Conference for the West Texas County Judge and Commissioners Association. I move for its approval. We have a motion and second. a second. Uh, any discussion, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Finally, members of court, on item number two, we're now requesting that the <coughs> Commissioner's Court uh, authorized uh, and approved authorized staff to proceed with RFP number 2016-130 for long-range planning and analysis related to the hospital district, uh, also known as JPS Health Network. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, again, I, I guess my only concern is that we're requiring the uh, meeting at the, or requiring someone to be at the pre-bid, so I hope that if someone is inconvenienced by that, that they can at least hire someone to come in here and sit down and sign up and maybe raise a hand to say what time is it so they could prove that they were there. Just saying. Motion passes unanimously. In case anybody had any ideas and might be watching our live stream. Thank you. I don't think there's anybody even watching. 
You know, there are some people whose lives are so... I'm uh, here. That's a good time to stop. Yeah, I think that's a great time to stop. Go right ahead. Receive the file personnel agenda. Second. We have a motion to second to uh, receive and file the personnel agenda. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Our Thank second. you for saving me from the continued digging of the hole. Our second item, we're asking the court to approve a double fill of a position uh, in domestic relations as well as a worker. <coughs> as explained in your court communique, uh, Ms. Glenn is losing one of her caseworkers uh, on June 7th. That individual will be leaving with four, uh, 400 vacation hours. Ms. Glenn is requesting a double fill, effective May 2nd, and a waiver effective June 18th. The impact of the general fund for both uh, transactions will be approximately $25,200. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our final item <coughs> is in court to approve uh, United Healthcare Insurance Company Stop Loss Policy Amendment Number 5. Uh, the court may recall that last fall you uh, actually approved United Healthcare as the vendor for stop loss coverage in plan year 2016. Uh, the rate this year will be $23.49 per prescriber per month with a specific deduct deductible of $500,000. And that's the same as it has been in the past? The de deductible is the same, if I can pronounce the word, yes. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. <clears throat> motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beecham. Eating more pork skins will help most anything that ails you. Huh? Good morning. Yeah, but it may create other things that I don't <laughs> that are less desirable than the raspy voice. <laughs> We have four items for your consideration this morning. <coughs> Our first item is a bid award recommendation for RFP 2016-048. This is an RFP for the Information Technology Staffing Augmentation Services contract. Our recommendation will be toward a pre enterprise basis, awarding groups one, two, three, four, and five to the primary, secondary, alternate one, two, and three vendors, meeting all specifications as shown in your court communicate. Move for its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is another bid award recommendation for bid 2016-070. This is a contract for the purchase and maintenance of our digital copiers. Recommendation will be toward a pre enterprise basis. Awarding to the primary, secondary, and alternate vendors meeting all specifications as shown in your court communicate. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our right, item number three is also a bid award recommendation for bid 2016-090. This is signing a contract for toner cartridges, maintenance supplies for inkjet and laser printers. Recommendation be toward a pre-enterprise basis and discount of the manufacturer's price list awarding section A, C, D, E to the primary and secondary alternate vendors as shown in the court communicate. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our fourth and last item is an item in regards to bid 2015-201. Uh, this is our annual contract for exterminating and pest control services. This bid was brought to Commissioner's Court on uh, September 29, 2015 and approved under Court Order 121143. Uh, we are recommending cancellation of the award to Shamrock Pest Control and rewarding this to the next low bidders, uh, selecting pest proof extermination and uh, double D termite and pest control for our secondary vendor. Uh, Shamrock uh, had some issues of showing up to do the work. The owner also took ill. Uh, he asked to be relieved of his, of his contractual ob obligation. There are five months left in this contract and um, we are recommending the pest proof uh, take over those services for the county. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Mr. Riley. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We got three items for you today. The first one is we're requesting that the commissioners court approve an interlocal agreement with the city of South Lake related to the construction of an acceleration lane extending from State Highway 114 turnaround bridge 
onto the eastbound State Highway 114 front row. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Already been built. <laughs> the second item is we are requesting that the uh, Commissioner's Court approve an interlocal agreement with the City of Benbrook for the striping of Chapin Road, Williams Road, Bel Air Drive, Old Benbrook Road, Stevens Road, Jerry Dunn Parkway, and Rolling Hills Drive. Move approval. Second. Their, their mayor got a street named after him, Jerry Dunn. Any other little tidbits of wisdom you want to? <laughs> well, I, I knew you. I knew you. you know, I don't... Is he still the mayor? No. no he, I know him too. He was my opponent the first time I ran was for commissioner. Really? <laughs> That's right. He was. We do. We're just continuing the conversation up here a little more. It's all right. We're, we're, we're finished. Okay. You can we're go okay. ahead. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the third item is related to the second item. It is we are requesting that the commissioner's court consent to an approval to begin work form for the project with the city of Benbrook for the strapping of Chapin Road, Williams Road, Bel Air Drive, Old Benbrook Road, Stevens Road, Jerry Dunn Parkway, and Rolling Hills Drive. That's not right already completed, is it? No, it is not. <laughs> Move approval. <laughs> How come that wasn't in the, how come these items weren't down under commissioners and judges stuff? Because it's with the uh, strapping crew, which is under transportation services. Mm -hmm. good, good answer. I guess it fails for a lack of a first. I move approval. We have a motion and second. We're Did I miss the second? <laughs> I guess I was talking. Uh, any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I would... Just mentioned, not because it falls under transportation and y'all don't have anything this week. Uh, yesterday, we had a meeting, uh, Kelly, Han Senator Hancock, uh, and several others, Commissioner Wynn was there. But uh, two or three months ago, we met with Uber uh, and looking at a possible solution to some of our transportation, first mile, last mile transportation uh, needs within the county. And, you know, we've been working for the last couple of years on volunteer networks and different things along that top lines. So we had a very good meeting. We had people from Catholic Charities, from the T, from uh, Mission Arlington. MHMR. Uh, MHMR was there. We had uh, the mayor from uh, Mansfield, pro, Mayor Pro Tem from Arlington. And I think that as a result of that meeting, there are going to be some, uh, at least pilot projects with Uber to see about helping to provide the service. And in many instances, as we looked with MHMR, as we looked with Catholic Charities, their cost per ride right now is running somewhere between $20 and $50 a ride. Uber believes that they can do that maybe somewhere in the $10 to $15 range, maybe even less. Uh, they provide all of the same uh, background checks, really even more than some of the driving programs that are currently in place. In Dallas, they have entered into a partnership with DART to provide some of those, again, first mile, last mile services. So again, I think it's the private sector working with the public sector, working with, uh, with the public on providing a need. And when you consider that in Tarrant County, less than half of our population is covered in a transit deal, and even within the transit, that first mile, last mile is difficult, then I think it's, it's something that's pretty exciting. The other thing that I like very much about what Uber is pushing out there and putting out there is the ability for folks who need a little bit of extra money and qualify as a qualified driver. It gives them that opportunity to, uh, to make that. And examples that they specifically cited is they have uh, a large, they have a, they have a percentage, I won't say it's a large percentage, but they have a percentage of their drivers who are deaf and they actually have worked their apps and their deals so that a deaf person can drive. Um, they also, where most of your statistics regarding women drivers uh, for taxi drivers are the one to two percent range, they have, um, what I think, I think they said something like 30 and women. A million. 
there a significant amount of women who are able to drive again because there's no money in the car. Um, they have an opportunity there and, it, and it's and because everybody knows everybody that's getting in that car, then it has been a very comfortable or a more comfortable setting for a woman to be a driver. And they also have gone out, they made a, they set a goal for uh, military folks or military family members as their drivers, especially in those areas where there were a military base or something along that lines. And they far exceeded that goal within the first year uh, that they're doing that. So. They are now, I believe, in, uh, I don't have the number right in front of me, but I believe over 400 cities uh, in the world, uh, most of which, again, are in the, uh, the United States. But I, I, I really believe they're taking a very good model and they're continuing to improve on it from a technical standpoint. And they believe that through their work with uh, hospitals, between MHMR, Catholic Charities, things like Mission Arlington, that they can greatly improve uh, get the ability to provide rides that are otherwise now have to be scheduled weeks in advance if they're going to happen. <clears throat> so I know that Catholic Charities is going to look into this. Uh, I think Mission Arlington is going to do this pretty quickly, and I think there'll be others. Uh, Robert, one of the things they mentioned was the fact that a lot of times on an outpatient surgery, somebody might be at the end of the day and they can't drive themselves home, they don't have anybody Cheaper to pick them up, although they might be able to take care of them. And so this is something that is going to act that. So uh, I think we're going to see this as a bridge to a time when maybe uh, an expanded transit system would work. But like I said, they're working now in partnership with DART. They're having conversations with DCTA, and I believe that they will, We again, we had someone from the T there, and I believe they'll begin some operations with that. So I feel like there's some real good possibilities here. And you might have to get you a smartphone. You're getting your voice back, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> I'll lose it when I need to. <laughs> Are there any appointments today? Okay, then we will, uh, you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move for the approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Mangans. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have two items we'd like to bring to you this morning. The first is the monthly update from the hospital district. Mr. Early is here to address the court at this time. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mangans. Oh, and Thank you, members of the court. I, I want to personally thank you, and particularly with, with live streaming, thank you all for the RFP that you passed. There are a variety of people that are constantly half empty glass folks and folks that are a bit cynical and people that are constantly looking for conspiracy theories. So when you all took the action that you took, I have told so many people that that is such a positive approach for this county. And there are a lot of folks that live in counties that don't have that working relationship between a hospital district and their commissioner's court. I applaud you. We get excited at JPS and we want to jump out there and we want to do a variety of things and we want to do them fast at times because we're looking at our patients. And the work that you all have put into this to help us with this, to make this ultimately successful, to work on a process that works fairly for the citizens, to make sure that we have not only the proper input but make this work right, I applaud you all. And I want to take the time to applaud and thank G.K. Manius and his staff for the amount of work that he put into that RFP and Jack Beecham and, and Jack and his staff. And it, it's kind of hard to thank Jack because I, I came into the building the other day and there's a life-size hot dog with Jack's <laughs> picture on it. And so it's hard to, you know, incredibly. It? It, it is difficult. It's it really is. It, it's tough. But I did want to indicate, aside from the fact that he is the poster child for Hot Dogs of America, he is a good <laughs> man and he does good work and he has an incredible staff. And, and we at JPS are indebted to him and his staff and Mr. Manius and to you all because I think this is going to be better for the community and better for um, the way things are going to work in the future. So thank you all very much. I appreciate that. 
Uh, Laura Burnside is one of our gifted and talented staff members at JPS, and she made a presentation at the last board meeting uh, about our translators and our translation services. One of the things that I think should be of, of note to y'all is I'm constantly asked, what's the Affordable Health Care Act, even today, what's the Affordable Health Care Act going to do to JPS, going to affect you negatively, positively? And there's not an answer to that. But over time, we have not seen negative effects of the Affordable Health Care Act. In fact, we've seen some benefits from parts of it, and we've seen some challenges in other parts. But one of the things that JPS is different for is that um, on a daily basis, we have 44 different languages spoken at JPS. And I think that is a surprise to people. We have 128,000 times in a year um, that we need translation services. And so we provide so many different languages, and we have 39 full-time translators that translate for people. And when you're going in for surgery, or you're going to figure out what ails you or what your problem is or what your situation is, be it dire or be it just preventative medicine, it's very, very helpful to have that language in your native tongue. And you might also be surprised that one out of four um, families in Tarrant County, English is a second language. Um, and it is challenging. We have three major languages um, at, at JPS, um, and that's Spanish, and that's Vietnamese, and it's Arabic. And so to make sure that you're providing the proper translation to that population is critically important. And, and we do that. We have, uh, because we are a melting pot here, and because we are a place that people want to live, and because we have an international airport hub brought by us, people choose to stay here. And we should take pride in that. But we also have to realize we have a lot of first-generation Americans. And because of that, we need to help them and help them understand. So I'm proud of our translation team and the 39 people that provide translation. And there's not a lot of hospitals that provide that level of service. And I'm proud of JPS. Last thing I want to tell you all is that yesterday was a monumental day for us. Um, a, a very proud, uh, brave, and courageous man left our hospital yesterday. Um, our police officer was discharged from JPS yesterday. And the thing that's powerful about that is the amount of people that took care of that individual. I, I had the opportunity to spend time with his wife. I've never met a stronger uh, woman in my life. She is amazing. His in-laws, his parents were there 24-7. And that police officer won the hearts of everybody at JPS. And so when, when he left yesterday, it was a tribute to a man's life. It was a tribute to a man's life who protects us, and it was a tribute to the people at JPS who dealt with those kind of situations every day. We save lives just like his every day, but not often are the people that come to JPS part of a CNN news crew or being watched by television and media. And, and I do applaud the media. They were very kind and fair, and they respected the family's interest for privacy. But um, it's a good day when you know that 6,000 people all had a share in making life better for a person that makes our life better on a daily basis. So I'm proud of JPS. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I just want to uh, let you know and judge. I'm one of those people who like to watch commissioner's court meetings and JPS board of managers meeting. <laughs> it's a uh, it has been very helpful to me because uh, at about four or so in the evening on Thursday where you all meet, I tend to spend about a couple of hours watching. It helps me understand your challenges and your operations and the opportunities there. So it's been working for me personally. Thank so thank you for that. Thank you very much. And I think it's worked for a lot of other people. I've heard very positive comments. And thank you for your efforts and others. We're, we're proud. And thank you for allowing us to chair the hall. You must live a very boring life. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of you all have some voice issues, so I'm going to exclude myself and let y'all start feeling better. And I don't want y'all, any of y'all talking too long. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. <clears throat> the, uh, I watch C-SPAN. So. The last item that we, that, yeah, that really does mean you got an exciting time. Um, the last item is our Tarrant County Law Enforcement Memorial Committee, and we did have a meeting last week, 
Um, and the members of that committee are uh, Sheriff D. Anderson, uh, Sharon Wilson, our DA, Commissioner Johnson, and myself. Uh, Commissioner Johnson uh, really kind of worked on this in uh, many years and has accumulated uh, you know, a lot of the funds that are in there right now. Um, what we, uh, and I'm going to depend upon the two of y'all to help me recall, but uh, we came away from that meeting feeling like we wanted to give the employees of Tarrant County an opportunity to come up with some ideas about what that memorial might look like. Uh, you know, not detailed architectural drawings or anything like that, but con conceptual type of, of an idea. It'll be uh, something which we uh, will place somewhere on the courthouse grounds. I think right now it's uh, tentatively set for over on the east side. Um, we would like to have your ideas or any employees' ideas by June the 30th, uh, so you, it gives you a couple of months to, uh, uh, to work on that, um, and, and you can, if you've got any questions or any ideas or anything like that, you can talk with any one of the four of us uh, or communicate that to anyone. Now, what have I, <coughs> what did I forget? Commissioner Johnson, Sharon? You started, <clears throat> you suggested this year that uh, United Way, that you could contribute to United Way. Have you found out a dollar figure on that yet? No, I've got to go back, and I have not had an opportunity to do that. Uh, I don't see you. There's Ann. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Any other, uh, if, if you've got any questions at this time, but again, we wanted to throw it open to, we feel like we have extremely talented folks that, that work for Tarrant County, and we wanted to give the employees an opportunity to, uh, to submit their ideas. Do we have a timeline yet? When do we want to start the construction? We want to get the ideas for the, the uh, memorial in, kind of look at that, uh, you know, run that by the court, I think, as, as we get, you know, okay, if this is what we really are looking for, then make sure the court agrees with that. And then at that point in time, we would decide how we would, uh, how we would go forward and, and get the more formal drawings as well as the actual building. Yeah, we're, we're going to put the squeeze on some people to help us. Uh, last time, <clears throat> I didn't have a whole lot of help. And thank goodness the DA has jumped in and the sheriff and the judge. But, but I think I raised around twenty or, or so thousand dollars initially to get this thing started. And don't know for sure yet until we get the idea of what it's going to look like and get, then get some architectural design on it <clears throat> to know what the total cost is going to be. But we're probably talking somewhere 100, 150,000, roughly. And then that will allow us all to kind of get involved in, <coughs> um, you know, requesting people or getting people involved in the paying for it. Okay. That's, That's all we have at this time. Right? Okay. Then at this point in time, we'll recess our open meeting, proceed to close to discuss items exempted under section. 551.071, of the Texas government. Uh, you know where the horse fountain is, right on the corner?
You're not going. I'm not going. Roy's not going. I don't think Roy's the woman Roy's not going. He got time for it. We're live. Having uh, returned from our closed session, there being no business to conduct at this time, we're adjourned.